Hi everyone, the purpose of this video is we are going to be discussing lab webs. So one of the common questions I get in this course as well as other courses is what is lab webs? Why do we have to use it? How in the world do we use it? And I'm gonna, this video I hope can um, address all those questions and we can get things set up. One of the advantages of taking web editors is that you'll learn how to use lab, web, lab webs within Dreamweaver. You don't have to download some extra uh, FTP client because um, normally what you have to do in other classes is you download an FTP client and then you basically uh, take all of the files that you've made uh, for a week's worth of work or a term project or something and then you have to physically FTP or take that uh, take those files and then FTP them to Webster Lab Web so that the class and the instructor can view them. Um, in web editors we can just do all that through Dreamweaver through the sites that you're building. Um, so. Let's just talk briefly about lab webs. Um, let's see. So you're going to go to labwebs.webster.edu. I spelled Webster, W E B S. When you first go to labwebs.webster.edu, gonna, you're going to get an authentication required box. This is where you're going to insert your username, your password is your connections ID, so it's a set of numbers, and I did it wrong. It's one of those things if you think too much about it you'll forget the numbers. <laughs> When you first log into Lab Webs, you're going to get, uh, you log in at the root level to get to your level, forward slash your username. So this is similar to what you'll see if you've never uploaded anything into Lab Webs before. Um, I went ahead and just took all my stuff out. I, I do that quite a bit. Um, anyway, so this is what you're going to see. You're going to see an images directory, account test, and then this private directory. What you're going to want to do um, is uh, within Dreamweaver we can actually you know you created your local sites a while back now we can actually go and edit those and um, put uh, cr create it so that you will be putting those files uploading them through FTP um, to this lab webs account so what we're going to want to have here eventually is a directory which essentially is a folder that's going to be entitled um, co-op um, 2120 so let's pop over to Dreamweaver. So I'm going to bring my Dreamweaver over. This is the back door of your course. This is all the files that I've been using to make your course. Anyway, so I'm going to create a new site. If you've already created a site um, that you've been building, then you just have to go and edit it, which would be the same thing. You would go up to site and manage sites and edit. I'm going to create this site. Uh, Maybe, how about Co-op 2120? The URL is um, what we were just talking about. So labwebs.webster.edu forward slash your username. Um, you do not have to use server technology. That would just be if you were edit editing a file on your home, on your local site, it would then automatically edit it on the server. We don't need to do that. You're going to choose where you want your file to, to files to be stored. I created just a file here on my desktop. You, I'm guessing, have been working on your files somewhere else for your term projects. So um, you're going to direct your computer to that server file. So I don't actually don't have any content for this but I just want to show you this is where I'm going to be creating the site. This is within this co-op 2120 folder. You're going to select it. And then you can hit next. Then you're going to choose FTP. What's the host name for your web server? You would just write labwebs.webster.edu. What folder on the server do you want to store your files in? Forward slash your username. If you don't put the forward slash, it will not work. What's your FTP log login? That's your username. 
What's your password? That's your connections ID. Go ahead and test your connection. If you've entered in all of your information correctly, which is you chose FTP, host name again is labwebs.webster.edu. What's the folder forward slash your username? What's your FTP login? Your username. What's your FTP password? That's your connections ID. And then it'll, you'll receive a dialog box that says, Drew, we're connected to your web server successfully. So click OK. Go ahead and click Next. You do not need to check in, uh, enable check in and out, and hit Done. Then it will automatically give you your site. If you already had files in that site, you would receive the uh, expand icon here, and you would click on that, and then it would show all the files in your site. Now what we want to do is we want to create um, a file on the site to store all of your files. Over here, over to the right, you're going to notice expand to show local and remote sites. So now we see here's your, your files on your local computer. Here's the files on the server. But So what you need to do is you need to connect to the server. And now you're going to see your directory. You're going to see that private directory. You're going to see that images directory. So now what you want to do is you want to create a new f directory within there that's going to be called Co-op 2120. So you can right click, new folder, So now you just created that new directory on LabWebs. To prove that, I'm over here on my LabWebs account. I'm going to hit refresh. And now you'll notice that I have this directory, Co-op 2120. If I go in there, here's the directory. It's empty. This folder is empty. And this is where you could then create perhaps another folder, which could be the title of your site. So it could be Frankenstein. So let's say you wanted to create, um, let's say your site was supposed to be called, you know, Frankenstein. So within this folder, you can create a new folder and call it Frankenstein. So now this could essentially be like the URL. So maybe if someone was to, if your client um, was to go to Frankenstein.com, Think of this as what where their site would all be stored. So now that we just made that, we hit refresh. We now have this directory, um, Frankenstein directory. And then whenever they access that directory, the index page would be what would be automatically loaded first. And then any other pages off that index page, which essentially is your home page, um, should be what. Uh, you know, the index page will then have all of the, um, will have your top navigational menu, your bottom navigation, or however you set it up with your client to then navigate through the rest of the site from this Frankenstein directory. So I know Lab Webs is a little bit difficult thing to get used to. I, I know that some of you in the course might be choosing to host your site um, somewhere else, which is fine. If you are using Lab Webs, um, this is definitely pay attention to this video. Ask me if you have questions. If you have trouble logging into LabWebs, remember, don't forget it's your username. And then you're going to have to use your connections ID. Um, if you've done that and you cannot get into LabWebs, let me know. I can contact IT and see if something's wrong with your account. Um, and count yourself blessed for being able to do all this through Dreamweaver because Dreamweaver does make it you know, so much easier. And that's the advantage of taking web editors is you can do all this through Dreamweaver and not having to do this through um, an FTP, FTP program. I have had some students that are more comfortable with an FTP program because that's what they've been using for lab webs with all of their, uh, for all of their other courses. That's fine, but I definitely recommend, you know, utilizing Dreamweaver uh, to set up your, uh, your site on lab webs because Dreamweaver makes it so much easier. So let me know if you have any questions and I will talk to you later in the course. Bye.